All right, let's talk about the Bible. Yeah, the original Bible, the Torah, not your shitty remake. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about your all girls Ghostbusters version of the Bible. <laughs> Talk about the OG shit. Yeah, I was raised Orthodox Jewish. I don't know if you know what that is. That's a uh, Frisbee Jew, you know, that kind. <laughs> Second highest level of Jew, one step down from Hasidic Jew, or as I call them, Mortal Kombat Jews. <laughs> Yeah, whenever you see one, just go, finish him. And they'll, they'll have no idea what you're talking about. It's great. The ones with the, you know, the sideburns, the long, the curly fries, as my black friend calls them. Yeah, my friend Miss Pat, she came to visit me in New York. She'd never seen one. There's very few Hasidic Jews in the black ghetto of Atlanta. She, she saw her first when we were talking, she just goes like. She was like, Ori. She didn't say my name, but she's like, uh, Ori. Is that an Amish? And I'm like, no, I mean, yeah, more or less, yeah. It's pretty much the same shit. She goes, why that man has curly fries? <laughs> I'm like, those are not curly fries. She goes, what they do? And I'm like, first of all, the grammar on you people is on another planet. Uh, and by you people, I don't mean black people. I mean non-Jews. <laughs> yeah, Jews are racist, but we don't see skin color. We see IQ and income level. That's all it boils down to. Yeah, goys, that's all you guys are. You ever hear that word? Goy, it's Yiddish for uh, non-Jew. Yiddish is like Jewish abonics. You know what else? Goy means non-Jew. And just so you know, when you hear it, you think it's fun and friendly when they're saying it to you. It's not, they're shitting on you to your face. <laughs> goy is a derogatory word. Probably my favorite derogatory word. Yeah, because most derogatory words, they single out one race or culture and make them feel bad. Not goy. Goy is the most inclusive of all the derogatory words. Do <laughs> so you know how pompous that is to have as your term for the other? That means to them it's one-tenth of one percent of the world. And then, ugh. <laughs> Various shades of goy. Yeah, dude, I was raised way religious. I went, to, I went to a seminary called the Yeshiva in Jerusalem for two years after high school. So you go to study if you want to become a rabbi. Uh, spoiler alert, it did not take. <laughs> Anybody here raised religious of any kind? Yeah, where were you guys? Jewish, obviously. What? Jehovah's Witness, hell yeah, dude. The fucking Harry Potter of Christianity. I know. <laughs> Who else, what do you got? Baptist, what? Wesleyan. Wesleyan? That's a new one, dude. I honestly never heard of that one. Is that some kind of Christ? Okay. You fucking Christians are hilarious with their separations. Every other religion is just one thing. Just Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, and there's fucking 31 flavors of Jesus. <laughs> Lutheran and Baptist and Southern Baptist, which is just like Baptist, but with slavery, I think. So funny. And Catholics think they're the best ones, too. Yeah, they do. They look down on the other ones. From an outside perspective, Catholics think they're way better than the rest of the Christians. And I'm like, based on what? Besides most child rapes per year, like what else is quantifiable? It's weird though, ask a devout Catholic, like an older devout Catholic, ask if they're Protestant, they'll get mad at you. They're like, we're nothing like Protestants. <laughs> You're like, nothing, what's the difference? And they'll hit you with something crazy. They're like, well, we believe Jesus carried the cross way up top. <laughs> yeah, and they think he kind of dragged it a little bit. So, it's basically a different religion. <laughs> crazy Christians with stupid separations. You guys still religious now? No, okay, that's good. If you are religious, that's totally fine. It is totally fine. There is a solid chance you're gonna hate the next 68 minutes of your life. <laughs> So, those of you raised religious uh, of any kind, do you ever think about what they taught you when you were little, now that you're a grown-up? Guys, it's all darker than you remember it. It really is. I mean, let's, let's start at the beginning. It's the only way to do this. Adam and Eve, you guys know that story? Okay, if you don't know that story, this is all gonna go over your head tonight. <laughs> Here's what happened. In six days, God created the world. On the seventh day, he rested. You guys remember this one. 
Uh, and then later, God went to Adam and was like, Adam, how do you like it here? How do you like the Garden of Eden? And Adam was like, oh, dude, I love it. It's awesome. Plenty of sunshine, tons of animals to fuck. This place is sweet. <laughs> And God was like, wait, bro, are you, are you fucking all the animals? <laughs> and Adam was like, not all yet. You made a lot of animals. <laughs> you gotta give me some time. By the way, I killed a frog on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, his eyes were bigger than his belly. <laughs> Split it right open. My bad on that one. <laughs> and God was like, fuck, dude, stop fucking the animals right now. And so Adam was like, who should I fuck that? And God's like, oh, yeah, good question, fair enough. He's like, tell you what, I'll make another person for you to fuck. Humans should fuck humans. So Adam, with no concept of women, right? There had never been a woman ever in history before. So when he heard another person was coming, he was just like, sweet, another dude I can fuck in the butt, I assume. <laughs> And God was like, no, you assume wrong. It'll be like a dude, but it'll have like a, like a front butt. <laughs> and you can fuck the front butt. <laughs> yeah, Adam loved that idea. He was like, sweet, I can fuck the front butt and the back butt. <laughs> God's like, no, no fucking back butt. I will never change my mind on that. Adam's like, why not? He's like, that's where shit comes out. I don't want you to fuck where shit comes out. I think it's disgusting. You can fuck where piss and blood sometimes comes out, but not shit. <laughs> oh, I made Adam so angry. He's like, why would you make shit come out of such a good fuck hole? <laughs> God's like, where else could it come out? He's like, dude, bottom of the foot. I've been thinking about it. It would be a way better place. You shake it out really easily, wiping as a breeze. Every puddle's of a day. It should be bottom of the foot, dude. And God was like, fuck, yeah, that would have worked. <laughs> oh, maybe a week was rushing it. <laughs> what was the time crunch on that? I never understood that. <laughs> it's an important project. Take your time. <laughs> There's nobody waiting for you. There's literally nobody waiting for you. <laughs> so he made Eve. And to make Eve, you guys remember how I made Eve? The rib. The rib. Yeah, you guys remember this. Yeah, I told Adam I gotta crack off one of your ribs. I'm sure Adam was like, why is that the new process for making things? <laughs> is from scratch no longer available? <laughs> Did you lose powers, dude? <laughs> if you're tired, you can take a nap. That zebra's been eyeballing me pretty hard. I got time. <laughs> yeah, you can get it. Come get it, black and white. <laughs> but he goes, no, I gotta crack off a rib. So he. Cracks over on Adam's ribs, like, fuck, whatever. <laughs> Abracadabra, he makes Eve out of that rib. And that's the reason, my rabbis always told me, that's the reason that men have one less rib than women have. It dates all the way back to Adam and Eve. Yeah. Then I grew up, and I found out that we have the same amount of ribs. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lie they told little Jewish kids. I, I don't even know what they had to gain. Do you know how embarrassing it is to find out you're wrong about that at 41 years old? <laughs> People are like, why would you think it's been a different amount of ribs? I'm like, I don't know, when I was nine, some guy with beard dandruff told me. <laughs> so after Adam and Eve and, uh, and Moses and Noah, a few other, you know, Bible stories that Jews and Christians kind of share, you know, at that point, we kind of split off. Well, no, we stayed right where we were. We split off. <laughs> You guys wrote an unauthorized sequel. <laughs> in fan fiction. That just, you added a superhero out of nowhere. <laughs> With all these miracles. You got us beat on miracles. I'll give you that. You got us beat on miracles. We crush you motherfuckers on holidays. We got a lot of holidays. What's the biggest Jewish holiday? What do you think? Hanukkah, very good. Goy, idiot, stupid, wrong, <laughs> wrong, dumb, goy, dumb like all of them, goy. <laughs> People think it's Hanukkah because it falls around Christmas and we do presents and stuff. Just so you guys know, it's one of our lowest level holidays. <laughs> Hanukkah's not even in our top 40. 
For real, it's on the level of like Arbor Day for your people. <laughs> It just feels big because it falls around that time. Presence, by the way, is not even really part of Hanukkah. That's us copying you. <laughs> ha presence on Hanukkah is a modern Western civilization part of the holiday. My dad grew up in Romania before the Holocaust. They didn't do presents back then. That's here in America and England. It's all these Jewish kids. They saw their Christian friends getting presents and they wanted in. <laughs> yeah, and when Jew kids want free shit, Jew kids get free shit. <laughs> So they went to their dads, like, Dad, how come Christopher gets presents and I don't get presents? And their fathers were like, <laughs> More or less that. So now we do presents. Eight days of presents. It's an eight-day holiday. Oh, some people think it's eight times the presents you guys get. It's not. We have the same amount of parents you have. You know, we have the same amount of, but we just space them out over eight days. We get better presents than you, you know, because we're far richer than you are. <laughs> I don't know what kind of white trash presents you guys got. We got like a grilled cheese sandwich wrapped in a shopping bag. You know, what'd you guys get? Like sock full of pills? Postcard from your dad written in your mom's handwriting? <laughs> but yeah. Same amount of presents, though. You're supposed, to get, you're supposed to get one present a day for eight days. And then if you have like nine or 10 presents, you just double up a day or two. Uh, so one year, I, I didn't have eight presents. I only had seven presents. My mom didn't know what to do to get me, to get me every day a present. Instead of just ra getting one extra present, you know? Some shit, like wrap an avocado, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Instead, her fix was to split a present into two and wrap each half separately. Like I wouldn't know, like I opened up day one's present, I was like, oh, it's skateboard wheels only. I wonder what's in tomorrow's flat oval box. She's like, you'll never guess. I'm like, it's for sure a skateboard, mom. I'm the second smartest race in the world, and this is very easy to figure out as it is. Korea. Here's a story of Hanukkah. I'll tell it to you. So uh, you can talk about this in December with your uh, bosses, probably, at work. Uh, <laughs> a long time ago, the Jews got kicked out of Israel, okay? One of the many times that happened over history. We are historically, we are the weakest race in the world. Anybody who wanted Israel just fucking took it. For real, Greeks, Romans, people from Alabama. Like, it doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> Anybody's like, get out of here. Like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Stop, 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 don't hit me, don't hit me. It's so fucking defeatable. I hate it. Ugh. Here's why I don't really do impressions. Here's my only impression I do. It's the sound of the soul of a Jew. Ready? <laughs> yeah, all our stories are about survival. They're never about succeeding. Nobody's ever like, watch out, the Jews are coming. You know, it's like... <laughs> yeah, ah, well, Palestinians, we got them. All right, we, yeah. <laughs> we broke our losing streak on that, for sure. <laughs> Dude, I saw this, uh, I saw this um, uh, Free Palestine march last summer in New York, uh, and they were all like marching. They had a big Free Palestine sign, but the Palestine part was covered. People were like in front of it, so it was covered, so I couldn't see that part. So I just saw the first half. So I like, run across the street. <laughs> what do they give? Oh no! <laughs> like this is the worst place for me to be. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, fuck. But they're all staring at me. I didn't know what to do. I just started scrambling. I was like, oh, I'm just headed to Little Palestine to get some Palestinian food. <laughs> they're all like, there is no Little Palestine. And if you ask Jews, there's also no big Palestine. <laughs> yeah, so it was the Greeks. The Greeks drove us out to the Hanukkah story. We were gone for about 100 years, and then we came back. They left. They were like, this place sucks. And they fucking took off. 
So they left, and then they, they really, they fucked up our, our temple, like our main, you know, church, pretty much. They like messed, I don't know what they did. They knocked over chairs, and they, you know, <laughs> spray painted dicks on the walls. <laughs> Who knows? But the main thing they did was they used our, our oil candle, it's supposed to keep lit all the time, this oil candle. And they only had one day's worth of oil left. And new oil was eight days away. And they're like, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna keep it lit? And the Jew's like, I don't know, fuck it, light it up. Let's see what happens. <laughs> And somehow, one day's worth of oil lasted for eight days. And that is when Jews learned how to be cheap. <laughs> the miracle of Hanukkah, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that candle's the miracle of Hanukkah. Dumbest miracle in the history of organized religion. <laughs> you Christians, man, your miracles are the tits. You guys got great miracles. God, when I started, when I, I, so I left my religion, I, I, I switched to a secular college, University of Maryland, and I, I met all these Christians, and uh, they told me about, about Jesus, and I was fucking blown away. They were like, uh, he walked on water, and I was like, mm, that's impossible, can't. <laughs> I've seen water before, so sell it to somebody else. And they're like, yeah, it's a miracle. I'm like, oh. I'm like, he didn't get wet? They're like, I mean, maybe some splashback on the sandal, but. <laughs> I don't think Jesus was waterproof. <laughs> you know, if he dragged his foot, yeah, probably a little bit of water, but for the most part, pretty dry. <laughs> I was like, damn, was that his best trick? Like, oh no, it was not his best trick. <laughs> his best trick by far, he died, and then it was like, nah. <laughs> and everybody's favorite trick was turn water into wine. That dude, man of the people, for sure. <laughs> I heard about that, I was like, what kind of wine was it? And they're like, Ari, you're literally the first person to ever ask that question. <laughs> what a nitpicky, Jewy thing to worry about. <laughs> you get free wine out of water and you're still complaining? <laughs> you're like, well, I, I don't want a dry wine. I don't know. <laughs> just, just see if Jesus can do a Malbec. Just ask him. <laughs> but then they're like, what about you, Ari? What's the Jew's big miracle for the holidays? I'm like, oh, okay, well. We had this candle, and it lasted hella long. Yeah, our miracles are more like you had to be there miracles. Yeah. People came into the synagogue like two days later, it's like, is that, is that fucking candle still going? <laughs> one more day, that's a fucking miracle. I swear to God, that's a miracle. One more day, that's a one day candle. Jesus just like, rise! And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I believe if Jesus came back now, he would turn sand into Molly. <laughs> yeah. And it would be the best Molly. You know, if somebody's like, hey, I have MDMA. Like, well, you gotta test it, man. There's fentanyl going around. You can't just do whatever. Where, where'd, where'd you get this from? Like, from Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. <laughs> How good would communion be if you were hitting you with a fucking molly tab? <laughs> like, look, move. <laughs> God. By the end of the sermon, you'd be like, this guy cares about us. <laughs> yeah, Hanukkah's not our biggest holiday. And it's not Black Friday, I heard that too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, Passover, you're not, it is a big holiday, but it's not our biggest one. Uh, Passover commemorates when the, when the Jews left Egypt, were slaves in Egypt. I don't know if you guys knew about that. We recovered. Uh, what a fun story that is. Here's the basis of the story. Some woman, you know, uh, she was a slave and she had a slave son named Moses and she wanted um, Moses to be raised like a slave. So she just took a fucking half court shot. <laughs> She was like, I don't know, I'm gonna think outside the box here. How about we just chuck it in a river? <laughs> we'll put it in a little basket. And we'll throw it into the crocodile-infested Nile River. And hope for the best. And man, she swished it. <laughs> Baby did not get eaten by crocodiles or tip over. Uh, it went right to the Pharaoh's daughter. The Pharaoh's daughter, the king's daughter, was like, oh, I love, you know how chicks are around babies. She's like, I love a baby. Oh, I want a baby. So she raised it like it was her own. She raised this Moses. I don't know how he knew his original name, but 
same name. And, uh, <laughs> coincidence, lucky coincidence on that. Eventually, he was 19, 20 years old, went to his grandfather, the pharaoh, the king, and he was like, hey, motherfucker, I got news for you. I'm not your grandson. And the pharaoh was like, yeah, my daughter was never pregnant. We know <laughs> she didn't ever do that. Plus, you're balding with glasses, so. <laughs> I think you came from Slave Island over there. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the story. The Jews were slaves in Egypt. Egypt was a superpower, and their labor force, their manual labor force, was the weakest, most complaining people in the world. I mean, there's nobody softer than Jews. I think the pyramid's supposed to be houses, and the Jews are like, it's too hot, just pile it up. What a terrible, terrible choice for slave. And by the way, Egypt is in Africa. Like, there's better options out there. I'm just saying, who do you want picking up stones for you? Jakembe Mutombo or Gilbert Gottfried? <laughs> you chose wrong, Egypt. That's why your country's falling apart right now. <laughs> so let me tell you everything you need to know about Jews. I don't know where to start. I never know where to start. I'll tell you what, let's start with chicks. Let's start with women. Women in uh, Orthodox Judaism are second class citizens, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're not a full part of the religion. But, by the way, I can feel you turning on me. I didn't make any of this up, okay? Don't blame me. I do agree with all of it, but I did not make any of this up. <laughs> it's better than a lot of religions. Like, you can't beat your wife in Judaism, but if you do beat your wife, they'll be like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not really a full part of the religion. Like, if this is a synagogue, it'd be all the men down here, and the women would be up there behind a fence, like, in the balcony, looking at us participating. <laughs> What are you guys doing back there? <laughs> We're like, shut up. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> so there's all these laws associated with being a woman, especially a married woman. If you're, okay, if you're a married woman in Judaism and you're on your period, you're considered unclean. Yeah, which that's actually... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a problem with that spiritually, but physically, that's actually a very nice way of describing what's actually happening. <laughs> unclean is fine. I mean, like, legitimately, if I put two giant buckets on the stage, and one giant bucket said, clean vaginas. And the other giant bucket said, unclean vaginas. And then I handed each of you a bleeding vagina. And I said, put that anywhere. <laughs> Which bucket do we all know would be overflowing with vaginas? So you're unclean until you stop having a period, then you have to have seven days of no blood, and then you gotta go to a ritual bath called a mikvah, and then you're considered clean again. Um, and it's seven days of no blood in a row. That means if you get spotting two days out, fucking... Yeah, <laughs> clock starts over, bitches. Yeah, it's like microwave popcorn. It's gotta be the full three seconds or it does not count. <laughs> you know, it's like pop, one, two, pop, one, pop, one, pop, one, pop, one, pop, one. Two, pop, pop, one, pop, one, pop, one, pop, one, pop, pop, one. Two, pop, one, two, three, yes. All burned. That's your vaginas in Judaism, just so you know. It's the microwave popcorn of body parts. And while you're unclean, um, you can't touch your husband. And your husband can't touch you. Oh, yeah. You can't even sleep next to each other. You gotta go sleep in the corner. Like the bleeding whore that you are. <laughs> it's every month with you. <laughs> so this law, it's called Nida. This is the reason. This is the, sociologically, this is the reason that Orthodox Jews have large families. It's not only so you can fill up our minivans. There's another reason <laughs> for it. It boils down to this. How long do periods last? What do periods go for these days? <laughs> Five days, okay. She's heavily disagreeing with you in the back. <laughs> so what do you think it is? Seven, Se seven said the mansplainer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's split the difference, five to seven. <laughs> That's what I thought I was gonna be a woman saying the answer to that, but seven, I know. <laughs> five, five to seven days, I believe she said. Uh, 
Plus seven days of no blood. That's 12 to 14 days, okay? Um, plus another day or two to go to the ritual bath, to go to the mikvah. They're not like 24-hour fitness. You know, they're only in certain <laughs> spots. So now we're talking about right around 13 to 15 days after you start your period is the first time you're allowed to touch your husband. Uh, and it's also when you are the most fertile in your cycle. Your ovaries are right at the bottom of your pussy. <laughs> And you haven't touched your husband in two weeks, and he hasn't touched you, you're both super horny, and right then, God's like, ha, 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 go. <laughs> I mean, there's no chance, dude. There's no chance. Imagine the husband's home washing dishes, comes coming out of his ears. <laughs> Fuck, I hate this religion so much. Should have been a Buddhist. Buddhist fuck all the time. All the kids are like, Daddy, you need to shut the fuck up. Daddy's not in the mood right now. <laughs> God, I fucking hate this shit. You can beat your kids in Judaism, just so you know. That is allowed. You can't beat your wife, but you can beat your children. And right then, the woman walks through the door, you know, the guy's all cranky, just fucking pent up. And he's just like, where have you been? And she's like, ritual bath. And he's like, oh yeah? Why don't you go get that sheet with the hole in it? There's a rumor, just so you know, there's a rumor that Jews have sex through a hole in a sheet. Uh, and it's not true. But it's not not true. <laughs> so it comes from, it comes from it, some racists made it up a long time ago. It comes, I'll tell you where it comes from. Jews have this like, sort of prayer poncho thing called seat seat. It goes under, it's like a t-shirt, but it's like made like a poncho. It's like got no sides and it's got these white tassels. Sometimes you'll see that white tassels coming out of it at the bottom, it's called seat seat. And the white tassels are for like, in times of trouble, we would tie razors to the end of that. <laughs> nope. like, create a fucking bubble of safety. <laughs> but anyway, I guess some lady was like washing the family's CC and she was hanging them up to dry and some racists walked by. And dude, say what you want about racists. They're not the best people in the world, but um, they are very creative. <laughs> some of them walked by and they saw one hanging up and they were like, I bet they fucked through that. <laughs> and it just stuck. wasn't even a bad thing. The hole is like that big. So I'm like, yeah, spread that. <laughs> but then uh, it changed, it morphed. The rumor morphed into like a regular bedspread with a little hole cut in the middle of it. <laughs> and here's how strong the rumor was. I thought it was true. <laughs> Up until legitimately two years ago. <laughs> so I guess they, they thought like a woman was supposed to lie down naked and you cover her up with a sheet, like she's dead. <laughs> you know, and you line the hole up like right over her vagina. And then you gotta get in there, you know, and like through the hole. Do you guys remember the game Operation? <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. But instead of using tweezers, use that sweet D. And you just fucking... <laughs> yeah, I think actually, I don't know. It might be that way. It might be another way. It might be that the guy holds a sheet like over him, you know, just puts it over that and just has his dick out of the hole. <laughs> like, like a walking glory hole. <laughs> just the dick, I'm like Ghostic! Booner! I don't know, I always thought it was the former, but it, it might be the latter. Yeah, oh, sorry. For the non-Jews, for the Goys. Uh, former and latter means first and second. <laughs> the, reason, the reason for the sheet that I always thought was twofold. I thought it was just because these are like super religious people, super pious people, and they're studying the Torah and the Talmud, which is like the Gemara, all day. And they, they don't want to be distracted, you know? Anybody with a wife or a girlfriend, you know, you think about her naked sometimes. So they're like, to combat that, they're just like, cover her up with sheets. You don't have to fucking look at her, so don't be thinking about her. Don't be distracted. And then the other reason is, um, there's a commandment to be fruitful and multiply. Uh, in order to do that, you have to have an erection. And Jewish women... It's <laughs> the best way to say this. Uh, it's not ugly, it's not ugly, that's not the word, that's not the word, it's not ugly. Here's the word I'm gonna use. Inbred. Yeah, we're, we're an inbred race, everybody. 
The boys and the girls. We've only been fucking ourselves for like 5,000 years. So if you don't get outside genetics, shit starts to get weird. That's what people ask me, is Judaism a race or religion? And I'm like, it's both. They're like, well, how can it be a race? I'm like, because you can pick a Jew out of a lineup. <laughs> you know, if you have eight men, you're like, the Woody Allen one, obviously, you. Come on, come on, let's go. You know, it doesn't work with other religions. You can't pick a Catholic out of a lineup. Unless you're in, like, the middle of raping a child. <laughs> I mean, you would have to get so lucky with the timing. Yeah. Or no, I guess what you could do, you could have a lineup and then release a child into the room and then lock the door. And then you just gotta play the waiting game. <laughs> you gotta wait for the one to start shaking and sweating and like talking to him. Keep it together, Jeremiah. You guys raping that? I'm not, I just wanna know if you guys are gonna rape that. I'm not, I'm not gonna rape that. I'm not even thinking about raping it. I just wanna know if you guys are gonna rape it. Hey, can I smell his butt? Is that allowed? <laughs> Dude. I've been making fun of that Catholic uh, priest sex scandal for like 20 straight years. <laughs> I can't stop making fun of it. I have Catholic friends, they get mad at me about it, but fuck off. <laughs> My buddy Steve, uh, he's Catholic, he's a comic, and uh, I made a Catholic joke once and he got, I got off stage and he just, he, was, he had enough of it, you know? So I got off stage and he was like, Ari, what do we have to do to make you stop making fun of Catholics? And I was like, one thing. <laughs> It's just that one thing. Are you, are you guys not getting the message? Just stop raping children. Do you have a game plan in place to improve? Can I spitball with you a little? Can I suggest, I don't, I don't know, right or wrong, but start raping adults for a while. Let's see how that works out. 50, 60 years, something like that. And then eventually, maybe no rapes at all. But I think we can all agree, you know you're fucking up as a group when raping adults is a step in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, the only problem is, <laughs> now every time a Jew fucks up sexually, all my friends are like, well, well, well. <laughs> Guess you guys aren't perfect either. <laughs> yeah, like fucking, what's his name? Jeffrey Epstein? <laughs> that was a bad, Epstein is a Jewish name, if you don't know. If you didn't know before, now you know. If you don't know who Jeffrey Epstein is, he, he, was a, he ran an underage sex trafficking ring. Yeah, had his own private island where he did it. Bill Clinton went there, but just to play golf, I think he said. <laughs> there was no golf where Bill Clinton lived, so he went to Fuck Child Island and get a sweet nine holes in. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> anyway, they're like, what about Jeffrey Epstein, Ari? He's a Jew, and I'm like, that's fair, that is fair. And I'll answer that. Uh, from a Jewish perspective. Here's, here's what Jeffrey Epstein goes to show you. It's that no matter what industry Jews choose to go into, we will rise to the top of that industry. He's the number one name in underage sex trafficking. Anyway, the point is, Jews have a look. That's my point. Everybody's got a look. You know, even, I mean, continent to continent, people look way different in South America than they do in Africa, you know, Canada, they look, it's like, whatever. Even country to country, people look different. Like, I, I've been on tour all over, like, Europe. People looked at, I was, dude, I was in Berlin, four days in Berlin, hottest women in the world. I've been to Sweden and Brazil, I thought they used to be the hottest. It's German girls, they're fucking tens, dude, every one of them. And the dudes, too, every dude there was, like, six foot five and chiseled. I was just walking around Berlin for four days, staring at these same beautiful men and women. And for the first time in my life, I was like, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> I guess I never looked at it from their point of view. <laughs> Germans are perfect. And Jews all look like we're dying. <laughs> we are, we're falling apart, man. You need outside genetics, the shit starts to get weird. Same as, look at the royal family in England. They're all like, I'm your leader. <laughs> you know? They're all half-tards eating their own shit in the corner. <laughs> same as Jews, we're falling apart. Every Jew has the same fucking Jew pattern baldness. <laughs> you know? That's why God's like, try to get laid, do something, cover it up if you have to. I don't know. <laughs> 
or falling apart, nearsightedness. I had LASIK eye surgery, I still have glasses. Yeah, Dr. Weinberg did a great job. We're all neurotic, we're all like, Tay-Sachs disease, falling apart. Feed a glass of whole milk to a Jew. Watch him rain diarrhea for 40 days and 40 nights. Absolutely falling apart, because we're inbred. It's kind of like, uh, do you guys know what pugs are? <laughs> the dog breed pug, the most inbred of all dog breeds. Have you ever seen a pug get excited and then struggle to breathe? <laughs> Throw a ball to a pug four times in a row. Listen to the sound of him just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Jews are. We're the pugs of the human world. <laughs> anyway, the point is, we have a look. So every Jewish woman I've ever had sex with, there's been like 10, 12 in my life, and every one of them, for a moment or the whole time I'm looking at her, but at least for one moment, I'll look at her, and she'll look exactly like my Aunt Ruth. <laughs> and my boner's like, no fucking way. <laughs> so to combat that, I always thought they just was like, well, why don't you just take a sheet, cover her up, <laughs> So. Yeah, then you just fuck a multiverse of holes and you're fucking there. By the way, here's what I should tell you. There's two types of Jews. I'm only talking about one type. There's Ashkenazi and Sephardi. So when the Greeks drove us out or the Romans or one of the fucking thousand times we got driven out, uh, we got pushed in different directions. And some of us went north to like Poland and Romania and Hungary and places like that. And some of us went east to like Syria and uh, in Iran, Iraq, places like that. Those are called Sephardic Jews, or as my grandmother called them, uh, animals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, they don't cut their challah, they tear it. Uh, don't have them in our house. <laughs> and those people are tougher. They're tougher Jews because they got some Arab in them and they're just like tougher. They never had the Holocaust too, so there's no victim mentality there. <laughs> the Holocaust never got to Syria. So they're all like, what? Why are you a victim? Just fight back. And we're like, you just wouldn't understand. <laughs> But I'm talking about Ashkenazi Jews, Woody Allen Jews. That's the type I'm talking about. So let me tell you, uh, let me tell you what we did in, uh, in seminary, in yeshiva in Jerusalem. All we did was study the Torah and mostly the Talmud, uh, the Gemara. I'll use those words interchangeably. It means the same thing. Uh, and we prayed, three times a day we prayed. Uh, it's a lot. Muslims go five times a day. You got us on that. Christians pray like twice a year. <laughs> uh, and the Talmud is really just a series of what ifs to help codify the law. So the Torah will say something like, like um, thou shalt not kill, right? You get put to death if you kill. But the Talmud's like, what about self-defense? And you're like, yeah, good question, Talmud, good question. <laughs> so here's two of my favorite what ifs from the Talmud, and these would still be done today. Um, my favorite two. Okay, what if, what if you're having sex with your wife, and in the middle of it, she starts a period? You know, that could happen. I know women, whenever I've had sex with a woman, and she's like, oh shit, I'm sorry, my period. They always get embarrassed. Which is weird, like, ooh, I started my period early. But I'm always like, oh, did you? I can't even fucking <laughs> tell. <laughs> and, <laughs> and chicks always get embarrassed by it. They're like, uh, sorry, but don't get embarrassed. At least from my perspective, I'm always like, I, I, I love it. You know, they're like, I started my period I'm like, that's right, you started your period early. Because I hit that back wall. <laughs> My dick starts a period. My dick is your god. My dick is your moon. <laughs> Makes us feel powerful. Don't feel bad about it at all. So uh, what if you start your period early? I would say, you know, just stop fucking. No big deal. If I was the ancient robbers, I would tell them, or keep fucking. You already got the sin. You may as well enjoy yourself. You know, it's like if you get a parking ticket, you don't move your car. <laughs> park for free for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's not what the rabbis of the Gemara say. They said, uh, no, you're not doing anything wrong until you find out she started your period. And then when you're inside her vagina, you can't pull out because pulling out is a stroke. It's an enjoyable stroke. So where are you gonna go? It's like, it becomes like a, a Chinese pussy trap, you know? <laughs> so this is what they say to do. This is what they say. I think in your, uh, your Daya or Baba Kama, one of those, but you're fucking, right? And then that you're, she goes, I start my period. You're supposed to stop, look up, 
Think of the glory and awe of God. <laughs> until, until your manhood subsides. <laughs> yeah, you have to let your dick exit of natural causes. <laughs> oh, what a fun bonding moment for you and your wife. For her to feel you go soft inside of her. <laughs> and how confusing from your dick's point of view, where you're just plugging away, you know, you're just like this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it just like stops. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Little movement, please. <laughs> A little movement here. Also, Definitely stop thinking about God. That's weird. That's not my thing at all. All right, well, probably gonna get out of here then. Here's my favorite, here's my all-time favorite what if from the Talbot. Uh, it's, about, it's about dietary laws we have, kosher. You guys have heard that word, right? Kosher, yeah. Um, certain things we can and can't eat, and that's what we call kosher. Uh, uh, Muslims have halal. Christians just go buck wild. <laughs> so you can't mix meat and milk. Not allowed to mix meat and milk. The reason for that is God is a cunt. <laughs> can't even go into it, but like, uh, so I never had a cheeseburger until I was 23 years old. Never had a cheeseburger. Yeah, it's weird, weird upbringing, you know? I, I, the closest I got was I had a hamburger and then six hours later I ate a slice of cheese and then I was like. <laughs> I had a couple of cheeseburgers coming out but never going in. Uh, also no, no pig product of any kind, no, no pork, no bacon, no ham, not allowed at all. Um, actually this is fun because uh, I took my nephew uh, for his bar mitzvah, I took him to a New York Ranger game. Um, bar mitzvah is a Jewish coming of age ceremony. You've heard that. Uh, it's like a Mexicans have quinceaneras, I guess, for little girls. Uh, it's when a bar mitzvah is when a Jewish boy becomes a man. And that's when he can read from the Torah for the first time and they let him on his own evict a family out of their home. Uh, <laughs> you know, all by himself. Um, and so for his bar mitzvah, I took my nephew to a ranger game. He's my Orthodox Jewish nephew. And uh, during first intermission, we went and got concessions. And I ordered a bacon cheeseburger. And he was just like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have to tell you, dude. When you're 19, you can fucking come out of this dumb cult. But <laughs> until then, I told your mommy you'd be good. So enjoy your french fries, loser. <laughs> but you got to understand, he's never seen bacon before. 13 years old, he's never been to a non-kosher restaurant. Why would he? He's only friends with Jews. He's only go hangs around with Jews. He's never seen bacon. He's never smelled bacon, never touched bacon. And he just had questions. <laughs> Look, I was already the cool uncle, you know? I fuck hookers, I do drugs. <laughs> but dude, bacon? <laughs> and he was just like, Uncle Ari, what, what does bacon taste like? And I'm like, oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> I, how, do you, how do you even explain bacon to someone who's never, it's like, you have no jumping off ground to understand this. It's like explaining freedom to a slave. <laughs> you know? Or hardship to a millennial. <laughs> he was like, my mom said it tastes like roast beef. <laughs> She's a liar, dude. <laughs> Your mom's a liar. It's my little sister. I knew it a long time ago. I thought she stopped lying, but now I know she's still doing it. <laughs> He's like, why do you think she's lying? I'm like, cause she's never had bacon. And I've had both bacon and roast beef, so I'm the expert here. <laughs> he goes, well, so you don't, like, you don't like roast beef? I'm like, you're missing the point completely. <laughs> roast beef is fine, dude, but next to bacon, roast beef is like making out with Madonna now. <laughs> so we, we have these kosher laws, and, uh, and so here's my favorite what if from the Talmud. What if you're making some soup, okay? Let's imagine a big vat of soup in, in the town square in Jesus' times, Jerusalem. You know, can you picture it? Some guy's making this fucking cauldron of soup, and one of these goys, one of these shifty fucking goys, <laughs> he's just kind of like milling about, you know, just hanging by nearby. What's that goy even doing here? Nobody wants him here. <laughs> just shifty, you know, just bringing down property values. <laughs> 
I hate when they're here. And he reaches into his pocket. This can't be good. What's this going? And he pulls out, yep, some ham. <laughs> no one's looking. Dunks the ham right in the soup. He's like, fuck off, Jews. And he fucking takes off. <laughs> what if that happens? Can you eat the soup or not? That's what the Talmud asks. That's a legit what if from the Gemara. <laughs> that I studied for three weeks in a yeshiva in Jerusalem when I was 19 years old. I get the other ones. I really do. What, what if you kill somebody by accident? What if you know, stab a period into your wife? Uh... <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. What if a rogue goy <laughs> loses goddamn marbles, <laughs> breaks through your Jew security, <laughs> and commits just the softest act of terrorism of all time? <laughs> it's a hate crime, pure and simple, it's a hate crime. But no loss of life. But ooh, what a possible loss of soup. <laughs> Well, what did that happen? Look at that, I've been poorly. So if that happens, the Gemara asks, then uh, what do you do? What do you do with the soup? Can you eat it or can you not eat it? What do you, not the Orthodox Jews, everybody else. What do you guys think? Eat it, a couple of hell knows. What? Take out the ham. All right, you're thinking. You're thinking. That's what the Gemara does, by the way. It just teaches you, like, think it out, logic this out. What can you do, you know? Maybe run it through a sheet, maybe whatever. Like, <laughs> You know, but all they did, the ancient rabbis just discussed it and uh, come up with the an answer. And you're all wrong. You're all wrong. You were never going to get it. Uh, the answer is, for sure, you were never going to get this. The answer is, it depends on the ratio of ham to soup. <laughs> yeah, and that number, and I don't know why, that number, actually, if anybody knows it, on the count of three, say it. One, two, three. Sixtieth. Yeah, one sixtieth. I'm not making it up. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you Christians are like, wait, what's going on right now? <laughs> Did Ari have 47 audience plants? <laughs> one sixtieth. The law is called Bito Bashishim, the waste of the sixtieth. And uh, if it's less than one sixtieth, you know, if it's, if it's one sixty-fourth ham to soup, then the ancient rabbi's like, hey man, let's just soup a little bit of ham in it. That never hurt nobody. <laughs> Yum, yum, eat it up. <laughs> but if it's a little less water or a little more ham, it's 159th ham to soup. Then they're like, dude, that's obviously ham soup. <laughs> Pour it out in the street. Don't give it to the nachos. That'll incentivize them to do it again. <laughs> Throw it out. Here's the cool thing, though. Here's what me and all my friends, like, tapped into. We were 19 in, in this yeshiva. We were like, uh, here's the coolest part of the law. The ham in the, in the non-ham soup, you know, if it's 167th, whatever, ham to soup, it's no longer considered ham. Yeah, it's lost its hamness. <laughs> so you can eat that ham. And that, my friends, is the loophole that we were all looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Jews do love loopholes. That's what makes us such great tax attorneys. We find loopholes and we exploit them. We really do. Uh, like, the, you know how the women wear the wigs? Loophole. You ever see the women wear the wigs? The Orthodox women? It's because this, because, okay, you can't covet your neighbor's wife. And, and uh, they say one of the things you covet is their hair. Hair is an attractive quality in a woman. So you have to cover your hair if you're a married woman. So these Jewish women, who are just as smart as Jewish men, they went looking for loopholes. So they went to their rabbis. They're like, Rabbi, can we cover up our hair with a baseball cap? And he's like, yeah, whatever, do anything. And they're like, can we cover up our hair? someone else's hair? <laughs> and the rabbi's like, where are you going with this? <laughs> and they're like, well, we propose we cover up our hair with some hair we bought in China. So it's not us they're attracted to, it's Sung Lee from Shanghai. <laughs> and the rabbis were like, well played. <laughs> um, you can't use electricity on the Sabbath. That's one you're not allowed to do. If the light's on, it's on. If it's off, it's off. From Friday night sundown to Saturday sundown. All shop is long, you can't use electricity. However, you can get a goy to use it for you. <laughs> you can't ask outright, because that's cheating, but you can hint strongly at it. 
So maybe you have an Orthodox Jewish family in your, in your building or your neighborhood, and maybe they talk to you for the first time ever. <laughs> and you're like, this is odd. You're like, hey, neighbor, uh, how you doing? I've lived next door for the last 25 years. I haven't said hi to you ever. <laughs> well, it turns out it's very hot out, and we left our air conditioning off. And you'd be like, okay, you should turn it on. I'm like, oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> I cannot turn it on, because my God forbids it. However, if a goy were to do it for me, <laughs> why then, I could be a nice, cool breeziness. <laughs> that happens on the Shabbos. What you should do is, you should go over there and turn it on for them. Be nice about it. And then you'll be known as a Shabbos goy. <laughs> and that is the highest level of goy. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, actually, if you have next door neighbors who are Arthur's Jews, just go over there and be like, how's your light situation today? <laughs> Friday night to Saturday, but can I help with anything? Anything bothering you, hint, hint? <laughs> They'll love you, dude. They'll give you tons of challah. <laughs> so anyway, back to Beetle Bashishim. Back to the waste of the 60th. Me and all my friends were like, that's a loophole we've been looking for. What if one of these goys comes to my mom's kitchen? You know, maybe the Amazon delivery guy. <laughs> and he's like, hi, Mr. Shafir, I need you to sign right there. Try on the line, if you don't mind. Right there on the line, if you don't mind. Hey, what, uh, what are you cooking back there? Uh, oh, is it some soup, you fucking bitch? <laughs> you know, makes a break for it, reaches into his pocket for his pocket ham. <laughs> that honestly, we thought you guys had ham on you at all times. <laughs> we didn't know any goys, we didn't want to know any goys, we just thought you guys were like, just in case some juice soup appears, so I'm gonna be ready. <laughs> fucking dunks it in the ham, fuck off juice, you know, and then. Takes off. Me and all my friends, same exact daydream. None of us were like, I'm gonna go fight that guy. Well, why? You'll lose. There's no reason. No, we all the same daydream. We're going for that measuring cup. And if it's less than 160th, we're eating ham soup tonight. Yeah, what, what did you guys dream about when you were 19? Same shit or like different shit? By the way, okay, so you guys, I, I know I'm painting this picture of, of Orthodox Jews being like, very insular and like different, but like we're not, we're not that different than you. It's like just like one step down, you know. We did normal shit. We listened to top forty music. Uh, we could watch movies, rated R movies even. No nudity, but violence was fine as long as it was guys dying. It was cool. <laughs> um, I played basketball. I was on a basketball team. My league was uh, three Jewish schools, uh, a deaf school, and a Sidwell Friends. <laughs> Yeah, but you had to play with your yarmulke on. The girls had to play with skirts with sweatpants underneath. Yeah, but I played with a yarmulke on. And what I would do is I clip my hair, my clip on, the yarmulke, just one clip, so it would like move around a little. I'm six foot three. I was the tallest Jew in like nine years of my school. <laughs> so I was a center. So there's no, Jews aren't known for their vertical. So what the fuck am I gonna do? So I get the ball on the post, right? And then I go like this, and the yarmulke would like <laughs> move, and it would put like defenders in a trance, and they would follow the yarmulke. <laughs> and like, drop step to the left, the easy deuce. Yeah, you gotta use what you got. You gotta use what you got. Yeah, we're like you, just like one step off, you know? Like, okay, like Christians, you're not allowed to have premarital sex, but you do it. You're just not allowed. And Jews, we're not allowed to touch women before marriage. Uh, but we, you know, we still did. It was like bad kids. We'd meet girls in the woods behind school and we'd like hold hands. But as we were doing it, we're like, what a fucking slut. <laughs> Oh my God, who would marry her now? <laughs> it's you, but one step off, that's all. <laughs> Let me tell you about Yom Kippur. It's our biggest holiday. It's our most somber day in, in, in the Jewish calendar. It's a uh, day of atonement. It's part of the Aseret Yom Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance. Um, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. And you have to pray for forgiveness the whole day on Yom Kippur. Uh, you have to fast from sundown to the next day sundown. It's super sun, but God's judging you for your sins. He's deciding on your fate. Um, this is one of my earliest memories. This is me as a, probably a six, six year old, maybe first grade. Guys, it's gonna get weird right here. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, first grade, my dad, before Yom Kippur started, he was like, hey, come with me to the front lawn. We're gonna say his prayer called Kaparot. Uh, and he brought with him to say his prayer, a chicken, a live chicken. And I was like, I'm gonna name it Big Nate. <laughs> Yeah, my dad said, oh, we will not be naming this chicken. <laughs> yeah, and I should have said, dad, what's this foreshadowing mean? 
Here's our capoeira works. Uh, you say this prayer over and over again, and then symbolically, as you say it, your sins are supposed to kind of like wash off you a little bit. But they don't evaporate, the sins. They got to go somewhere. So this chicken, yeah, it's a sin chicken. And it eats sins. I know, I get it. It's very strange. We're not the only culture that does shit like that. There's other cultures with similar stuff. There's a tribe in the Amazon, uh, Central South America. Every three years, the villagers come together, they put their sins on a goat, and they fucking kick the goat off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Catholics, you tell your sins to a rapist behind a counter. <laughs> and then, you know, he does whatever he wants with it. So let, let's not judge what's weirder or less weird. It's all pretty fucking out there. And Jews, we got a sin chicken. So six years old, first grade, we're saying copper row, we're saying this prayer over and over again. All my sins, you know, my gossip, fucking eat it, sin chicken. Uh, I punched my sister, I stole a pencil. Eat it, sin chicken, you love it, slurp it up. My dad's over there doing his copper row, and this chicken's just fucking gobbling. <laughs> fucking covering this bitch in sins, you know? It's like a bukkake of regret all over this fucking slut's face. God, come on, just Bible talk, you guys. That's all we're doing here. It's just regular Bible talk. We've done this before. And, uh, and then we were done, and my dad was like, all right, symbolically, we're wiped clean of sin. I was like, oh, so cool. Can we go back inside? He goes, yeah, we can go back inside. But before we do, I mean, this chicken's got to pay for his crimes. <laughs> what? Big Nate? What did Big Nate do? He goes, first, no, there's no one here by that name, first of all. I already told you that. <laughs> Second of all, he knows what he did. He punched his sister, he stole that pencil, he gossiped, all my stuff. Look, man, Jews are excellent lawyers. <laughs> and this motherfucker's gonna hang for his crimes. <laughs> yeah, so he reached down in front of me, six years old, I was screaming for him not to. I was like, Dad, no, no, please. And he reached down, he grabbed this chicken by the neck, and uh, calm down. Uh, <laughs> he didn't snap the neck. He picks it up by the neck, and just starts like, <laughs> oh yeah, way worse than whatever you guys pictured five seconds ago. <laughs> far, far more barbaric. Whatever you were thinking is like the way, I did not see it coming at all. <laughs> you know who's more surprised? Big Nate. <laughs> you should have heard like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is how I die? <laughs> you asked that chicken eight minutes earlier, how are you gonna die? No way, it guesses correctly. <laughs> Big Nate, how are you gonna die? Like, my old age, I think, probably old age. <laughs> These Jews treat me great, you know? He's never gonna ask, I'm gonna die by swinging over a Hebrew's head <laughs> in some Northern African voodoo ritual. <laughs> that, by the way, was not only my family. It wasn't like we were the weird ones. If you drive down the streets the afternoon before Yom Kippur, uh, down Teaneck, New Jersey, or Skokie, Illinois, or Kent Mill, Maryland, or wherever you guys keep your Johnny Cash Jews. <laughs> Yeah, you'll see dozens of them lassoing poultry in front of their horrified young sons. <laughs> then he finished and he threw it down right near my feet. Not dead, just hurt bad. <laughs> like not gonna recover bad. You know, taking a wing, trying to get away. Like, Mah! Mah! Why? Mah! just trying to get home to see your eggs one more time. Mah! And then you can't eat the chicken afterwards. Now I don't have the chickens. Because it's got, it's got all our sins on it, so you can't eat it. So you know what we do with it? You're, not, I mean, you're for sure not gonna like this, but uh, <laughs> we give it to poor people. We don't tell them about the sins. <laughs> and we're like, here, here's some chicken. Eat it, eat it. No, it's chicken. Go ahead, eat it. Eat the chicken. Eat the chicken. Eat the chicken. It's good. Eat it. Eat the chicken. It's good. Eat the chicken. Yeah, so here's the weird part. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's not the weird part at all. That's not the weird part. <laughs> yeah, that is weird, that's not the weird part. Here's the weird, I took it for granted. Here's the weird part. I went home again for Rosh Hashanah. It's part of the 10 days of repentance, Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. It's called the Aseri Yom Tshuva. And I went home again, probably seven, eight years ago. And at this point now, I'm way out of the religion, okay? When I was like, I guess 22, 23, I had a crisis of faith and I realized, I realized I didn't believe in God. And that's like a pretty important part of the religion. <laughs> uh, it was, actually, it was when I was in that yeshiva, in that seminary in Jerusalem. I, um, okay, so I left a light on above my bed, a reading light on above my bed in the dormitories. And um, 
it was just in my eye on Friday night, on Shabbos night. I couldn't fucking sleep. It was right in my eye. I was getting so fucking frustrated that eventually I was like, fuck this. I'll just, I'll, I'll turn it off. You know, and right when I went to turn it off, I was like, some people walked by my window. I'm like, fuck, I'll get in trouble. There's no goys to help me, you know, not in Jerusalem. <laughs> so I was like, fuck. And I didn't turn it off, but then I thought about it later. I was like, why would I care if people got me in trouble? You know, I should care about God. And then it hit me, I'm like, oh, I don't believe in God. <laughs> fuck. So I'm like, I'm out, I'm done. I went and got my first non-kosher meal, Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. No, do not clap for Taco Bell, <laughs> ever. Oh, I was so like overcome by, by like, guilt, I threw up after I ate it. But now that I'm looking back on it, I realized it was not the guilt at all. <laughs> I just thought that then. I thought that was real food back then. It's Taco Bell, never ever eat there. <laughs> so I left, I had to leave. I had to tell my, I had to tell my Orthodox Jewish Holocaust survivor father that I was out. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't stoked. I get it from his perspective. You gotta understand, like he sent me to Hebrew school for 12 years at like $15,000 a year. You know, Jews don't love wasting money. I don't know if you've heard about us. <laughs> and then yeshiva, seminary in Jerusalem at like 30 grand a year for two more years. And then when I got out, I was like, dad, I need to talk to you about something important. And he's like, you're gonna become a rabbi, don't you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, quite the opposite. <laughs> I want to tell dick jokes to drunk people all over America. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, he was mad. He goes, uh, he goes, I told him I didn't believe in God. He goes, even a dog believes in God. You're lower than a dog. <laughs> which, which did hurt until I looked it up. I'm like, what research are you quoting on that? <laughs> so we're fine now. We're totally fine. Uh, but I went home again for Rosh Hashanah, the other part of the 10 days of repentance. And before it started, uh, he took me to the backyard. He goes, come to say this prayer called Tashlach. He brought a loaf of bread with him. Back to this creek in the, in the woods, he starts tearing off pieces of bread, saying some prayer, throw it in the creek. And I'm like, what, what is this? Because I'm out, I don't remember any of this, right? And he goes, uh, oh, well, what we're doing here is we're putting our sins on the bread. And then, uh, <laughs> and these fish, these sin fish, uh, they eat our sins. <laughs> It's swim away. Yeah, and dude, all these memories started flooding back. And I was like, wait, is this like that chicken thing from when I was little? And he goes, yeah, yeah, good memory. Exactly. They're interchangeable. You could do either one. <laughs> you had the option? When I was six years old, you could have fed goldfish with me? And instead, you, you killed me, Lee! <laughs> he was like, in hindsight, it was not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, but getting out of the religion, man, I thought I'd, be, I thought I'd miss a sense of community and stuff, but no, nah, I got my first blowjob, and I'm like, oh, hell yes. <laughs> I loved it. I experienced new things. Every Saturday morning, I'm fucking flicking on and off lights. I'm like, uh, you know? <laughs> in college, I'm like, do you have OCD? I'm like, making up for lost time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I'm way out now. But there are still like Jewish like stereotypes that, uh, well, maybe you guys know them. So I'm sure you've heard them, you know, big dicks, great lovers. Uh, <laughs> what, <else? laughs> what have you guys heard? Go ahead, throw it out. Jewish stereotypes, what have you heard? Big nose. Big nose. Cheap. Cheap, sure. That, a lot of people said that one, okay. <laughs> Stinky. Stinky. Terrible, Terrible what? Eyesight. Terrible eyesight, not bad. Moronic? Moronic. Moronic. Oh, neurotic, okay, that I will allow. <laughs> what? They like to haggle, yeah, these are all correct. Afraid of cats, that's just one Jew you met, no. They control the weather, we do not control the weather. We are working on it, but we're not there yet. We are making plans. Brooklyn, bad at basketball. How about smart, funny, any of the good ones at all? Creative, you guys all want negative for no reason at all. These are all true. Everything you've said is true. <laughs> cheap, big noses. That's, that, here's how that affects my life. Because by the way, we are cheap, but that's only compared to you. But you gotta understand, I didn't grow up with you. So, you know, maybe I'm cheap compared to you guys, but I'm not cheap compared to Chaim and Shlomo. <laughs> 
you know? So we were aware of the stereotypes. I told you, we watched movies and stuff, but we just had fun with them. We're very funny people, so we just had fun with it. We had this game in high school we played called uh, Get It Juice, and the way you play was, if you had a few pennies in your pocket, you could start the game. Um, yeah, you guys can all play this if you want. Actually, you would get fired for sure. Do not play, don't, don't play. I, I'm wrong about that. Uh, but th any three pennies or more. So in between classes, if you were like, you want one, oh, I got some. As everyone's in the hallways, you just go, get it, juice! <laughs> you just throw it, and be like, oh, game on! <laughs> I got a penny, I'm a Jew, I got a penny! <laughs> yeah, our rabbis were like, absolutely not. You cannot play that game anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and now it comes out with a cheap with the big noses. Is every time I'm at a party with my comedian friends and cocaine is going around, like as soon as it gets to me, all my friends are like, well, I guess we're all done with the cocaine now. <laughs> the guy with the biggest nostrils who loves free shit the most just stepped up to the plate. <laughs> Come on, guys, cut me some slack. <laughs> Here's a modern Jewish stereotype. Jewish women, terrible at blowjobs. It's a real thing. Prove me wrong. <laughs> pushy, Jews are pushy. That one I hate. That one's the one I see the most. And that's Sephardic and Ashkenazic Jews. We're both fucking pushy, dude. Doesn't excuse all the bad shit that's happened to us, you know? The Holocaust, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty much it. But honestly, not much has gone wrong for Jews. But when it does go wrong, <laughs> it goes like off the fucking rails. Actually, off the rails would have been a really good thing during the Holocaust. <laughs> it would have saved a lot of lives. But they are pushy. Dude, I saw this Holocaust footage on the History Channel. They were showing like, because it goes like Shark Week and then Nazi Month. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I'm like connected to the Holocaust in a way. My dad's a survivor. My grandfather was uh, liberated from a, from a death camp. He was liberated from a work camp. Him and his two sisters and his mom survived. Um, every other great, one uncle survived and like 30 others were, were murdered. So like, so like we're connected to the Holocaust. We heard stories about it all the time. So I'm watching this line of Jewish men starved and like going into, I think a gas chamber. I think that's what it was. So they're going to their death and they're like slowly lined up. And I'm thinking like, dude, if my dad's village was invaded a week earlier, then that's him, that's his grandfather, you know? And this guy's like slowly moving forward. These other Jews are like coming in too. And, they're, and the first Jew is like, I was here first. They're so pushy. <laughs> So, all right. By the way, you guys, I'm, I'm focusing on Judaism just because it's my religion. It's the one I know most about. You probably know most about that. But I'm just one religion in many religions, right? So what I'm hoping you guys do tonight and this whole week and month and shit is go home and examine your own crazy shit from your own religion. Because I just don't know all your crazy shit, but I know you have crazy shit. Everybody does. I just know very little. What's that one, what's that one kind of Christian that fucking drowns those people? And you act like that's normal. <laughs> Baptist, yeah, what the, guys, that's not chill. That's very, I saw it in a movie at 21 years old. It's a fucking religious leader in a wet t-shirt contest in a creek in Kentucky. And then he's standing there up to his, and somebody rushes him, he's like, yeah, blah, I got Jesus in him. Somebody, yeah, I got Jesus in him. It's like Kill Bill, where he's like, who's gonna come at me? And then he just ups it, so he was like, hand me a baby. And I'm like, what, no way. Turn this up. And I'm like, nobody's gonna hand this guy a baby. And all these people are like, my baby, my baby, do my baby. I thought they were gonna start throwing babies at him like fucking Trump in Puerto Rico with the towels. <laughs> and he gets a baby, I don't know what he said. He was like, yeah, whatever. By the power of Grace Skull, my house. Oh, he's got Jesus in him. I love my job. <laughs> yeah, so you guys got crazy shit too, but None of what you got is as crazy as this thing. This comes from Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism. And there's a book in there called the Zohar, which is the most out there mystical book there is. Like it's, it's out there. And they tell you not to study it because it's, it's about ghosts and the afterlife and shit like that. Most of Judaism is honestly just how to live your day to day life. Like how to love your wife. We do respect our wives. You just can't participate, but you got to respect your wife. <laughs> how to love your wife, you know, how to keep kosher. What happens if a goy hams up your soup, you know. <laughs> All that stuff. 
And the Zohar is like, why bother? And it drove men insane to study it. Like, so they say you're not supposed to study it until you're 35 and married. But I saw it on a shelf in my yeshiva in Jerusalem. And I was, you know, Jews are inquisitive. We're nosy on two fronts. <laughs> and I was like, nobody's looking. I'm like, fuck it, I'm cracking it. I opened it up. I thought ghosts were gonna fucking fly out. Like, you know, <laughs> like one of those Harry Potter books. It's just a book, it's just a book. So I read it, and I read one passage before they found me and stopped me, and it was, uh, it was about masturbation. And I got lucky. <laughs> so you know how you're not supposed to masturbate in like every religion? There's not one religion. It's like, no, go for it. It feels awesome. Why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> of course masturbate. Look how long I made your arm. <laughs> I could have gone with any design. I, I went from scratch. I went exactly, thumb on top on both hands? Come on. <laughs> no, don't touch it. Every religion is like, don't touch it. So in the Zohar, it says that when you are masturbating, when you do masturbate, what happens is, unbeknownst to you, a demon woman comes into the room. <laughs> yeah, I know. And she rides you. She fucks you. You can't see her or feel her. So calm down, incels. <laughs> and she rides you. And then when you come, it goes into her. She gets pregnant. And then she, yeah, this is all real shit, dude. Uh, well, whatever, I mean, none of this is real shit, but <laughs> it's as real as Adam and Eve. <laughs> and she rides you and she gets pregnant and she goes off to this nether region. Like it's not heaven or hell or earth. It's just like this in between. It's kind of, kind of like Stranger Things, the upside down. <laughs> and she goes and has her baby. And the next time you masturbate, she comes back and she rides you again. Might be a month later, it's probably like 20 minutes later. <laughs> And every single time you masturbate, the same demon lady rides you. And every single time, she gets pregnant. She might be Latina. <laughs> it's tough to say. They didn't really have that in the Old Testament, but uh, signs point to that's what they were saying. And all through your teens, you're just whipping out these demon kids. Just kids, 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 kids. Through your 20s, kids, kids, kids. These demon kids you have. Oh, and it describes the kids. And they are fucked up. Yeah, not only because they grew up in a single parent household. Yeah, that can mess with any child. It's worse than that. They're mutants. Describes them, they're half demon, half human. So they're all like deformed. They got like one short leg, one short arm, like 18 eyeballs going on their side. Oh, and they hate you. Yeah, because I guess somebody told them if you just waited and fucked a regular human, they could have been a regular boy or girl. You couldn't wait, could you, degenerate piece of shit? You saw an inside out sock on the floor, and you're like, I'm gonna make a little demon baby right now. Yeah, by the way, none of this applies to women. You guys can jill off all you want, scot free. Yeah, enjoy your first taste of female privilege. But for the men, what we're producing is these fucking demon babies going, ah, I hate daddy. Ah! Somebody was like, what are you talking about, daddy? Like, yeah, I hate daddy. I hate him too. Oh! Blink, 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 blink. <laughs> and then two more pop up because you couldn't sleep on a Monday. <laughs> oh, what is this? Daddy did it. Ah, I hate him. Ah! All through your 30s, kids, 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 kids. Your whole life just whipping out these demon babies till you're 90 something years old, you know, and you're like, I think I'll masturbate one more time. I haven't been masturbating in 15 years. My Parkinson's will help me with this. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get one drop, bleep, one drop, doesn't matter, kid. And then you die, everybody dies, right? At some point you die, you wake up, it's the afterlife. And then you're like, is that the afterlife? I knew it, I knew it was an afterlife, is that heaven? Can I get in? They're like, well, this is what they tell you. They're like, you can come in, but before you do, you have to go meet your kids. <laughs> yeah, they make you meet him, and you'll be like, what kids? They don't have any kids. And they'll be like, <laughs> 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 you have so many kids. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, my favorite part of the job. <laughs> Dude, it says here in college, you made 11 per week for four and a half years. <laughs> so, they point you to this house, the demon lady's house. And you go over there and you knock on the door. And the demon lady opens the door and you're like, hello? And she goes, oh, hello, mister. <laughs> oh, mister, are you here to meet your kids? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. She opens the door and there's an army of them. You have no idea how many times you masturbated. It's so many. 
and they're all just walking around like Walking Dead, you know? They don't say anything. And then one of them finally is like, Daddy? And they all look like, Daddy's here! And they all start coming at you like, Why, Daddy? Why can't I be a real little boy, Daddy? I wanted to live, Daddy! We wanted to live, Daddy! Yeah, it's a fucking horror movie. Very unsettling. Here's the cool part. That is negative. Here's the cool part. You don't have to take care of them. <laughs> yeah, you still got to go to heaven. Just for real ruins the vibe that first week. <laughs> you know? You meet your like loved ones, your grandparents, like, Ari, like, I need a minute, guys. Uh, <laughs> whoa. So anyway, let's take one last one that you guys, that we overlap a little bit, Jews and Christians. And actually, Muslims have this one, too. Almost every religion has this. The flood, great flood. You know, you guys remember that one? Where God fucking killed everybody? <laughs> it was way worse than COVID. <laughs> it was COVID to the 9-11th power. <laughs> fucking bad news, man. So now, at the end of the rain, God sends a sign to let us know that there will never be another great flood. You guys know what that sign is? The rainbow, yeah, you guys remember this, the rainbow. The rainbow is God's way of saying, hey, sorry about that one time. <laughs> I overreacted for sure. You guys are wicked, but I, I went way too far. I'm sorry, uh, so here's some pretty colors. Even Stevens. <laughs> yeah, now I don't know if you guys know why God drowned everybody. They were wicked, the world's full of wicked people, but it was specific kind of wicked. Uh, does anybody know it? Sodomy is right. Sodomy is the answer. There's a few different discussions of it, but sodomy is a big one. Butt fucking, if you don't know what sodomy is. <laughs> the world is full of butt fuckers. And God hates butt fuckers, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I do not. I have no problem with all butt fuckers. I have butt fucker friends. I, I voted for butt fucker rights in California. <laughs> yeah, it was not called out on the ballot, <laughs> but it would have been less confusing. Yeah, I've, I've been a butt fucker, actually. Yeah, like 10 times. Nine times on purpose, one time, doggy style mishap. <laughs> yeah, I, wish, I was like, this feels different. She goes, yeah, does it feel different? <laughs> I bet it does. Yeah, but I'm not God. God does not like genocide, but he hates butt fucking. <laughs> you know, genocide, he's like, I'm not even getting involved. He kind of needed you there on that one, but uh, okay. Butt fucking, he's like, I'm gonna do something about this. <laughs> And back then, in Bible times, there were whole cities devoted just to butt-fucking. <laughs> For real. Sodom and Gomorrah, have you ever heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? Now, what do you think they did a lot in the city of Sodom? <laughs> they did sodomy, you guys. They did so much butt-fucking, they named it after their town. <laughs> That's how you know something is big in a place. When they named it after that, Buffalo Wings. <laughs> we all know where those came from. You know, in Hamburg, Germany, they had these flat beef patties on a bun. And they're like, what should we call these delicious Hamburgian flat beef patties? <laughs> so everybody knows they're from here. Yeah, hamburgers. And then two towns over, in Cheeseburg, they put their own spin on it. <laughs> Stupidest joke I've ever written in my life. <laughs> Literally, 20 years, I'm a fucking moron. And Sodom, they're just butt-fucking all the time. And like, we're the best butt-fuckers around. <laughs> and they're like, what should we call this? So everybody knows we started that here. And someone's like, how about we call it Sodomy? And it was like, yes, <laughs> Sodomy. I'll butt-fuck to that, uh. <laughs> Guys, we're not butt-fucking, we're Sodomy. <laughs> oh, they love, they excelled at butt-fucking in Sodom. I don't know what they did in Gomorrah, but I guarantee you it was some dark shit. <laughs> Yeah, the last thing you want is to get gamored. <laughs> but here's the deal, the flood, the great flood, it's about a thousand years before Sodom and Gomorrah. And back then, it wasn't one or two buttfuck towns. They were all buttfuck towns. <laughs> and God hated it, man. It drove him crazy. He'd pace him down to his godhouse going, these fucking buttfuckers. It's not what I want for the butt. The only fuck where piss and blood comes out. <laughs> and then Mrs. God was like, come to bed. Yeah. There's no Mrs. God, by the way. <laughs> so, so no Mrs. God. I, I did make that up. But if there was, she'd be like, just tell them how you feel. I'd be like, you're so smart, baby. Okay. <laughs> so he went to all the towns, right? He went to the whole world. He told them. He was like, guys, 
can you please stop butt fucking? <laughs> and they were just not receptive at all. They were like, we'll never stop butt fucking. <laughs> this is who we are. You're actually being culturally insensitive, to be honest. Get with the times, man. It's negative 8,000. A lot of people fucking butt fucking at this point. <laughs> It's like, really? All of you butt fucked? Like, yeah, man, we all butt fuck. Get over it. <laughs> oh, actually, that's not true. That's not true. There's that one guy up on the hill. Old Noah. <laughs> old vaginal only Noah. That's what we call him. <laughs> this fucking nerd. <laughs> he never butt fucks. All he ever does is just raw dog in the puss. Ugh, ugh, disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. They ridiculed Noah. They made his life a living hell. They really were really mean to him. They made him register as a sex offender. <laughs> Can't be around our good butt fucking kids with that crazy satanic raw dog and the push that you're pulling. <laughs> so Noah lived by himself on the mountain with his puss having wife. And that's where God found him. And he goes, Noah, is this? Or he goes like, Noah, is this true? That you just raw dog in the puss? <laughs> And, uh, and Noah was like, by the way, guys, I hope you understand. I I'm paraphrasing a lot of this. <laughs> I don't want anybody thinking this is a win of word for word translation tonight. The facts are all there, but the lingo is updated, uh, I would say, considerably. <laughs> it was more like, it was more like, what is that? Oh, come on, Lord. He'd be like, he'd be like uh, the, the Lord saith unto Noah, uh, dost thy not. Tap the ass of thy neighbor. <laughs> but Noah's like, dude, I like the vagina. And God's like, isn't the vagina great? He goes, yeah, you nailed it with the vagina. <laughs> it's your best invention by far. <laughs> they hit it off, got to Noah, on the love of pussy, for real. <laughs> That's all they talked about for like two weeks. You know that creepy guy in the bar that's like, I love pussy so much. You're like, dude, fucking stop. I don't know you. <laughs> That's God and Noah. That was a whole relationship. Traded pussy stories, the pussy secrets. <laughs> At some point, God was like, hey, Noah, you ever tried a wet vagina? And Noah's like, dude, wet vaginas are my favorite kind of vaginas. <laughs> it slips right in. You just gotta lick it a little bit. And God's like, eh, borderline behavior. <laughs> Maybe don't ask, don't tell on that. Uh, that's pretty gross. And then this is my favorite part of the story. This didn't make sense to me as a kid when I first heard it. I, I guess God goes, well, Noah, on account of our experience, just raw dogging into the puss, uh, you should be a zoologist. <laughs> but anyway, then you know what happens. It starts raining. And I always remember the story as, as God told Noah to keep it quiet, you know, keep it in the DL, uh, so they don't build boats or anything. But I remembered it wrong. I had to go look it up. I, I was on that trip to Berlin. I also ended up going to Israel. First time in like 25 years. And I went to my old yeshiva. And it's exactly the same. My old rabbi was there. It's like late 80s now. Sort of remembered me, but not really. He was like, what do you do now? I'm like, I'm a stand-up comedian. And he goes, that means nothing to me. <laughs> All he wanted to know, he goes, do you still use the teaching? And I was like, actually, yeah, lately. <laughs> Quite a lot. And he goes, do you want to learn something? I'm like, yeah. So we went to the Beit Medrash. We opened up this passage and we learned it. And it turned out God told Noah to warn everybody else because he loves his creatures, right? So he wanted to save them. Not all religions stupid. Like, it's a good lesson. Like, especially in this day and age when everyone's like, you have views different than mine. Like, write them off. God would say, no, no, go talk to him and try to get him back. We'll just write them off, you know? So that Noah, he told to do that. I would have loved to have heard that conversation. <laughs> you know, Noah, a good man going into town. He's like, guys, I, I need to talk to you. And they're probably like, no, they didn't talk to you. <laughs> Fuck off, dork. <laughs> oh, what are you gonna talk about? Who am I gonna use? Vaginas. <laughs> We're not interested. <laughs> Sell it somewhere else, loser. <laughs> and Noah was just like, why do you guys hate me so much? I'm like, cause your dick smells like pussy, faggot. <laughs> It smells like assholes, you fucking queer. Get the fuck out of my town. I was just like, fucking whatever, fine, goodbye. Enjoy the weather, by the way. It looks like rain out there. <laughs> and 
then it started raining. You know the story. It started raining more and more and more. You know, first it probably came into their ankles. People in town's like, I ain't gonna stop a good butt fucking. <laughs> probably had special traction shoes for butt fucking in the rain. <laughs> but then it kept raining more and more until they all drowned. All the butt fuckers, they all drowned. <laughs> Even the two year olds. <laughs> Enjoy church on Sunday if you're going. That's <laughs> who you're praying to child murderer God. So then, with all the buttfuckers gone, God was like, mission accomplished. Never have to do that again. So, now he sends a sign to let us know that he'll never send another great flood. And that sign... <laughs> yeah. That sign is the rainbow. The rainbow, the number one gay sign in the whole world. The rainbow's on every gay flag across the globe. Every gay bar, they all use the rainbow. I always thought it was just because it was pretty colors. Nah, dude, nah. It's a message from the homosexual community right to God. And they're telling them, plain as day, they're letting them know, hey dude, we told you a long time ago. And we'll tell you every time, we're never gonna stop by fucking. Any questions? 